Look at that, how convenient. What a fine place for a bottle opener right there on the UDS. How refreshing. It's a hot summer day. Hey, I'm Big Lou, and you're watching Big Lou Barbecue and other things I want to do. And let me tell you what I've got going on for you. Got a collaboration. Lots of channels in this today. All right, hopefully there's lots of channels in this today. Uh, we're doing a collaboration on how I built my UDS. So if you're thinking about building an ugly drum smoker, as they call it, or upright drum smoker, I think they used to be called before the derogatory term got accepted, you know, ugly drum smokers, but mine are beautiful, right? Uh, these things work great and you can build them yourself. You, it could be a weekend project. Now, if you can't build them yourself, there's good places where you can get them built for you. And I'll be mentioning a couple of those places in this video as well. But for the collaboration, all you got to do is look, type in hashtag how I built my UDS and you're going to see several YouTube channels with just YouTubers like me who built their own UDS. All right. The idea for this uh, happened with me and Rick at Rick's Barbecue and Specialties. He was on live. Let's do this. He says, yeah, he came up with the hashtag. All right. And um, these have to be UDSs that the YouTube operator built themselves. I want to tell you how they did it. I built my first one out of all hardware store parts. Went to the hardware store, the home improvement store, bought everything I needed there except for the drum, which I got used somewhere, and I built it. Ran it for about three years, and I recently refurbished it. And then after I refurbished it, I was contacted by the Drum Smokers Texas and say, hey, would you like to build one out of a kit? And I said, yeah, so I built one from a kit too, all right? And so I'm gonna show you both of them, one from hardware store parts, but there's a few, um, UDSparts.com parts on it now, uh, but there wasn't when I first built it. And one from a kit with a few uh, parts from Ugly Drum Smokers, Texas. So in this collaboration, everybody built their own UDS. Some bought a kit, some bought all hardware store parts. Some had ideas of uh, one guy, uh, he's got a double decker UDS, all right? I'm gonna mention him in just a minute. All right, so Rick, and I came up with the idea and then we tossed it around or I tossed it around with a Johnny at Texas Style Cuisine. He's got a huge channel, great cook, professional chef. He cooks in other drum smokers too. And I tossed it around with a kit over at, um, at Daddy Dutch Barbecue. He does competitions. So Daddy Dutch does competitions. Johnny, uh, teaches cuisine and has done competitions and sells barbecue on the weekends. Rick sells barbecue on the weekends. And I'm just a backyard bozo. I mean, you know, just a backyard barbecue bum, you know. Uh, but I like to cook in ugly drum smokers. So anyway, we decided we would do this. Other channels, um, I've personally invited 1984 Barbecue to do this. So I'm hoping he's doing it with me. And Four Seasons Barbecue too. He's got a double decker UDS. If you're thinking about making a UDS, there should be lots of channels in this. Just type in the hashtag and you should see lots of it, ways that we built our UDS. Now, here's the other rules. Show off your UDS or UDSs. Tell us about something you think is unique about yours, all right? And then cook something in it. You don't have to cook. By the way, I'm on my port swing, so if I'm going back and forth, that's it. Also, I've got ADD, which is attention deficit. I'm on my port swing disorder. Um, you don't have to cook in this UDS the typical barbecue meats, you know, the brisket, the pulled pork, the, the ribs, the chicken, you just cook something. You know, Rick once cooked an apple pie in one of his UDSs, all right? So I've cooked macaroni and cheese in mine. I've cooked all kind of stuff in it. Um, cooked a green bean casserole in it at Easter time, you know? So you can cook all sorts of things in a UDS. And uh, so hopefully we're showing you a lot of stuff. I'm gonna show you uh, one uh, chili con queso and just some barbecue chicken. All right, let me show you about my uh, UDS has gone on long enough. I don't want this to be an extremely long video. I want it to be entertaining and I want it to be uh, educational, all right? Well, there they are, my first one and my second one. My first one says, how are y'all? Como están UDS, all right? And my second one's got some fleur de lis on it, got saint's color. I got it kind of New orleans up and I call it my Ludat Pelican. It's the Ludat. And yeah, I got an umbrella on it because we got that New Orleans motif. It's got to be able to second line in style. It is my second drum, right? All right, let's take a look at these two drums. I'm going to tell you about them and uh, how I built them. And that's the idea of this collaboration. Now, this is the first drum I built. And you may have seen it on my channel before. I had two upright pipes that came out from down here. All right. Now, what I've got right down here is magnets where they were. And, of course, I could operate that like that 
for air control, but I don't need to use them. I put a vent on the back. I also had my channel name on the original one and a Bible verse uh, talking about, it was Acts um, 11, 9, talking about eating pork and stuff. And uh, I really liked having it on there, but it got rusted and it was time to refurbish it. So I refurbished this a few months ago. And since I'm a Spanish teacher, I thought it was a nice uh, bilingual pun to write, como están ustedes? Ustedes is abbreviated UDS, kind of like Mr. is always abbreviated in English. Nobody writes out M-I-S-T-E-R. In Spanish, people rarely write out Ustedes, they just abbreviate it UDS. So I thought it was a good pun. There's the other magnet. Now look here, I've got screws on it, all right, on each side. I made them longer, so they hold the uh, grates in and all that stuff, and I made them longer than needed to be. They stick out, and that's how I hold stuff. All right, I recently put a lava lock thermometer on it and lo and behold, it's been turned. I need to tighten it. There's a wing nut on the inside. I need to tighten it up. Uh, I really like that thermometer. It sticks out from the um, side a little bit and um, I like that aspect of it. It's working well. When I originally built it, I put the handles on. I kind of did it in a hurry. The handles aren't exactly straight, but that's okay. They do what they need to do. And I like having the handles. I built the shelf for it four years ago. I cut it out around here and uh, put it on there with shelving brackets. All right. You may have noticed this right here. That is my probe port and it's a piece of cork. And the first one I made lasted about four cooks. Then the next one I made lasted quite a long time. This one's been in there about two years, but remember I didn't use this UDS for about nine months as it was kind of out of service before I refurbished it last March. Uh, but so this one's been in there a while and it's time for that one to come apart. But cork makes a very good one. A pro port. I like doing it that way. What I do, here's a new one. I made this earlier today. I drill a hole all the way through it and then I cut a little groove in it. Just did that with my pocket knife with a drill and a pocket knife. And what happens is I just slide the probe wires right through there and then I put this in here and it seals it off pretty darn tight. Smoke does not come out. Once I push that in there like that, smoke will not come out and it will seal off real well, and I've got my pro wires uh, done. All right, and what I did was when I refurbished it, I added this slide vent right here. It was sent to me by Steven at Ugly Drum Smokers. I'll be talking about him a lot because he has helped me build these drums. And uh, this comes from UDS Parts, and I did a video, and it's on the UDSparts.com website about how much I like this slide vent. You said just run it just about there, just about two little of those rows of holes opening, and that'll run me about 225, 250. It doesn't take much adjusting. That's be about 350 right there. Steven also sent me some caster mounts. These are his old ones, and I ordered the casters off of uh, Amazon, and uh, they seem to work real well. All right, for the top, for my exhaust, I had a, and I did this four years ago. Had an old nine inch pot lid and uh, I just grabbed it and said, you know what? That'll make a great um, exhaust vent. So I just grabbed it and I put it on there where I wanted it and I drilled four holes. And then I put it in there with a uh, screw and a spring so it comes up. And I also use it as a handle for my uh, drum lid. So let's take a peek inside. By the way, I just hang it right there on a screw like that right through the hole in the lid. All right, I've got a top rack in this one. There's about three inches clearance. I don't use this much, but if I'm cooking something like maybe pulled pork or something like that, and it's not gonna be ready till the evening because it takes eight hours or a brisket or something, I'll put sausage or some thin pork chops up there and eat those at lunchtime. I like to do boudin in there. And I do use this for really cold smoking stuff. Like when I make tasso, I use the top rack. All right, so it comes out. Now, I need to mention that I'm using old Smoky brand grates here because this one has a tapered rim on it. And the Weber size 22 inch grate won't fit in here. So I have to use the old Smoky brand grates, which are about a half inch narrower. All right, and I just hang it right there like that. This is my main cooking grate. All right, cooked a brisket in here last week. All right. It comes out, most things I cook, I cook on this cooking grate right here. All right, and I can hang it right there with that too. So you see my drums looking like that with stuff hanging off of it. All right, 
This is my heat diffuser. It's a charcoal plate from an old smoky grill. I can replace these for a little less than 10 bucks, maybe $9.99 at my local hardware store. All right, and uh, so I use old smoky grates and an old smoky uh, charcoal plate, and that's how that works. This was an old smoky grate on one of my old smoky grills, and what I did was I took a Dremel and Dremeled off all the tines except for two. Then I put it up here, and this is how you'll see me cook the chickens. Not really a chicken recipe. I put it up there, and then I can hang ribs and stuff from it. You've seen me do that if you've watched my channel before. I hang ribs with that right there. Don't use the diffuser. The diffuser only gets used for briskets and turkeys, and I don't really use it for much else. All right, this old basket I need to replace. But I made it out of some expanded metal I had from an old cinder block smoker that I'd made around 2007. And a Weber um, brand charcoal grate from a, uh, so it's an 18 inch grate from a 22 inch grill. And for my ash pan, it's just a pizza pan. And I just reach in here like this and reach all the way down because I'm a tall guy and pick it up and dump that. Ass. Now, I did think it'd be an advantage to have it attached to the uh, grate, I mean to the basket. But now I've got a basket and the other one that does that. And I'm not so sure it's that advantageous anymore. It's real easy for me to just reach down in there. By the way, that's what the cork looks like on the inside of the drum. And it will last me a dozen to 20 cooks, maybe even two dozen cooks. And then I just go and buy another 50 cent little cork, make it real quick. And uh, it seals up real, no smoke comes out of it when I'm running uh, probe wires through there. All right, I've got a tumbleweed starter down in there, lump charcoal, all the vents are wide open, that slide vent in the back and both where the magnet holes are. And I've got this tumbleweed here. I'm just gonna light it and drop it down in there. Like that. Now, don't try this at home. I'm an untrained amateur. I'm gonna put it right there and that's gonna get my charcoal going. I'll shut things up and we'll get some chicken on here in just a few minutes. All right, let's talk about drum number two. It would not be appropriate if I was not talking about Ugly Drum Smokers Texas because me having this drum could not have been possible without him. Uh, Steven at Ugly Drum Smokers Texas, this was his idea for me to build a drum using a UDSparts.com kit and some stuff that he sent me. All right. He even got me the drum and this was during the 2020 uh, quarantine time. They had even blocked off the... Um, Louisiana residents from going to Texas and he even got me a brand new smooth sided drum. I cannot thank Steven enough at Ugly Drum Smokers Texas for the opportunity to build this drum. I did a video on it. You can see that uh, on in my UDS playlist. You can also see it at UDSparts.com. They sent me the uh, complete kit and I gotta tell you, I am really, really impressed with this drum. Steven, uh, a cowboy fan, made me, a Saints fan, some Florida de Lis to put on here. And I just attached them with magnets. So that one's a little crooked. It's just a magnet that's on the back right there. This one's on with two, so it stays a little straighter. Got the lava lock um, thermometer that comes with the kit. This comes with the kit. The tool hanger comes with the kit. The handle comes with the kit. And these um, pipe vents down here, they, uh, come with a, kick, a kit. And I just kick them open and kick them shut. They're real easy to operate with my foot. Steven sent me the new style caster mounts. You can see that these are a little different than the ones on the old one, all right? They're a lot much lighter. They ship a lot easier, and I think they're just as strong, all right? And uh, got the uh, wheels from the same place I got the other ones from. All right, the kit comes with the bottle opener. I demonstrated that at the beginning of the video. That's kind of nice. And of course, it's got the um, top uh, exhaust. Now. I put the handle and the hinge right front to lit, front to back, but I know that I need to open it. When you open one with a hinge, you need to stay at the side. And the hinge locks down. Now the kit comes with a uh, grate, but I didn't get the grate because I knew I'd be getting another grate. Steven said he'd get me a grate and then found out I won a grate. And the grate was actually made by short rib drum smokers. And uh, he made that, uh, I won it on the Ugly Drum Smokers Facebook page through the monthly photo contest or something. Had to pay shipping on it. But other than that, it's a fantastic grate that goes in here. Real heavy duty uh, steel. It was silver, but everything turns black in a drum smoker. All right, and this is the uh, basket that comes from UglyDrumSmokerParts.com uh, or UDSParts.com. And it's got a handle on it. And you lift it out. And look how convenient that is. 
the ashes stay with it. These are the ashes that remain after the cheese cooked that you're going to see me do here at the end of the video. And um, the problem is, unlike a separate ash basket, oh, I dropped a paper towel in there earlier. I didn't realize that. That's what that is if you were wondering. Um, I was wiping it clean somewhere and dropped a uh, paper towel down there. I'll have to pick it up. Anyway, the problem is, is to dump the ashes, I got to remove the charcoal. Well, if you have a separate ash basket, then you don't have to do that, but you do have to reach down the bottom to grab the separate ash basket. So that convenience depends on how tall you are and if you're willing to reach down the bottom to grab it or whatever. Uh, so there's a plus and minus to each idea. All right, let's continue the tour around it. We'll go ahead and shut it. Bottle opener, as I said, comes with the kit. Steven at Ugly Drum Smokers gave me the hinge. All right, and it's a powder coated hinge. And he also gave me this cool flagpole holder, uh, umbrella holder. So if it's raining or something like that, I can put that over it and keep the uh, rain from getting inside of here. Fishing rod holder if I want to take it down to my pond and uh, tight line for catfish or whatever. And so this is the Ludat. All right. The other day I cooked a uh, queso dip in here. Let me show you how that went. And in a few minutes, this will be lit up and we'll be dropping some chicken in here. We're running about 375 and that's where I want it. Right here, look at that, look at that. All right, now I'm gonna drop this in here. I have, don't have this on the tripod, I apologize. <laughs> that's gonna be our smoked chili con queso, or as they say nowadays, simply queso, queso dip. Um, queso means cheese to me. And that is 32 ounces of Velveeta. I've got an onion sliced up. Half of it's here within the meat. Half of it's there. Two pounds of ground meat seasoned with the homemade taco seasoned meat. I got a can of Rotel. I saved the juice from the Rotel and the drippings from the ground meat. If this cheese sauce is uh, too thick, I'm going to thin it with the Rotel dri uh, and the uh, meat drippings. I've got five Serrano peppers chopped and seeded or seeded and chopped. And I've got a handful of mushrooms. Recently, I saw James over at Amon and McClain on Smokers make a smoked queso uh, dip or a smoked chili con queso, and he added cream of mushroom soup to it. I don't have a can of cream of mushroom soup, but I thought it'd be good to add mushrooms. I had that. I'm going to close this up, and I'm going to let that just sit there and absorb some of the smoke for a few minutes. And then after about five or ten minutes, as the cheese begins to melt, I'm going to come in here and stir it. All right, it's been a few minutes. The cheese is beginning to melt and I need to go ahead and mix this up. Now, normally I would have just mixed it all up before I put it in here or as I put it in here, but because this is not primarily a recipe video, it's a UDS video, I separated it all so I could show you what the ingredients were. But it's time for me to just stir it around just like this. I'm gonna turn the camera off and I'll show you what it looks like once I get it all stirred. And then I'm gonna leave it to just sit there and cook and melt and Get all ooey gooey. Get more meat than I've ever used before. I've kind of got it mixed up, but I can tell it's going to be a little thick. So I'm letting you know. I'm going to add in the, some of the meat drippings, the juice, some of the juice from the Rotel, and a little bit of milk. Hey, well, here it is. I'd say the whole process took maybe half an hour or so. Uh, if I didn't mention it, I did add a little milk, a little bit of the meat drippings, a little bit of the Rotel juice, and dollop of sour cream and two pats of butter to get it smooth. Uh, also not shown, I throw these hot dogs on the grill right next to it. So I may have a hot dog and some uh, nachos with this queso dip, but um, let's go ahead and try it. Looks like, let's see, you got that crust on there. All right, I kind of missed that, but that's, it's still really piping hot right now, so it'll thicken up a little bit, but I think it's about perfect. Let's try it. Okay, guys. Mm, so what I do is I just pull that, cork out like that put my probes in just like that give myself enough slack to put them where I want them to go then I simply slide them right through the uh, little groove that I cut in the cork just like this like putting it on a uh, fishing rod I was probably fishing when I came up with this idea all right and um, this is what I think is very unique about mine I came up with this idea for a probe port and I push that in there like that, and that seals off. All right, and there's no smoke that's gonna leak out of that. All right, it's come up to temp, time to drop in the chicken. I wanna just do this just to show you how I hang chicken. 
Uh, este pollo tendrá mucho sabor. I marinated this in a serrano pepper based marinade that I made and I put on one of my favorite chicken rubs. Just gonna hang that one there and hang this one here. Now I wanna show you, I'll go under the breast and through the wing. I like to tuck the wings back and I also daisy chain it. So I have two of them on there and one goes uh, between the thigh because sometimes the thigh and stuff will fall off when the chicken starts to get done. So I like to uh, put two. Okay, if you can see right there, 336 is the um, smoker temperature. 170 is where my chicken is in the breast, at least that half. Want to double check both halves and uh, make sure they're at least 165 in the white meat and 180 in the dark meat. So like I said, I just hang my um, right here. Oh my gosh, I wish you could smell this. Mm -mm. All right, let me get the thermometer ready. Put that right there. Just right here. Lay it right there and just check it. Oh yeah. 190, well, that's good. Dark meat's fine for that. And the white meat. Yep, 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 we're done. White meat might be a little overdone. So I'm sure that this other bird is done too. So just pull that out of there. Look at that, just look at that, y'all. Just, just look how beautiful that bird is, all right? Nothing's burned, nothing got too much meat. The chicken didn't, all right? And it's just going to be delicious barbecue chicken. Okay, well, if I didn't uh, say it before, I do want to thank uh, James uh, over at Aim Woman Claim on Smokers. He cooks in uh, Ugly Drum Smokers too, but he had his built, but he did a queso dip and um, it inspired me to do that queso dip. I also wanted to show you how I hang chicken um, because not every, you don't have to hang chicken, but I think it gives it more of a uh, rotisserie type effect because you can get... Is not the heat's not just going to one side of the chicken. The heat's going all around the chicken. You know, I think it works well hanging meat like that. So anyway, check out my playlist. Check out all the other uh, channels. How I built my UDS, and I want to thank especially Rick at uh, Rick's Barbecue and Specialties, Johnny at Texas Style Cuisine, Kent at Daddy Dutch. I want to check uh, John at 1984. I want to thank him. And uh, Four Seasons Barbecue, want to thank him too. And uh, all the others for participating in this collaboration. And very important thanks to Stephen at Ugly Drum Smokers, Texas. But most importantly, thank you for watching. I like to say it in Spanish. Gracias por mirar.